Uncovering the entire Vertigo Gaming Inc. Legacy Collection has been a thrilling experience. Each and every title in the bundle has been completely different, offering unique gameplay across a broad range of varying genres. The Isle Blue is an oil rig operation simulator, the Sandbox of God a god game, Shell Blast a modern twist on Minesweeper, and Green Tech a unique experience involving controlling a hurricane to clear the world's pollution for the lack of a more suitable genre classification. And now we have Spirits of Metropolis, a match 3 puzzle game. So without further ado, let's take a look at the final game and give the Vertigo Gaming Inc. Legacy Collection bundle the long awaited overall score that has been lingering for so long. Spirits of Metropolis is a match 3 puzzle game developed and published by Vertigo Gaming Inc. It initially released March 24th, 2009 and received a re-release on Steam in 2018 with the release of the Vertigo Gaming Inc. Legacy Collection. Spirits of Metropolis makes a twist on match 3 gameplay, offering a unique take on what has become quite a stale style of play along with having tons of levels to complete and additional modes to get through. But the game does suffer from extreme difficulty spikes that can at times make the game frustrating and slow to progress in places. The objective of Spirits of Metropolis is to journey across the nine constellations of the Spirits of the Metropolis, completing the challenges that are presented to you in order to line up the stars. Each spirit represents its own purpose, such as strength, wisdom, health and so on. You can only play one constellation at a time and must complete one before being able to move on to the next. Each star of a constellation is a level that must be completed in order to progress to the next. Every level has its own goal where you need to accumulate a certain amount of points within the time limit given. You simply click where you want a gem to be placed with what gems you receive being completely randomly generated. Points are granted for making chain reactions which are explosions created when you link three gems of the same colour together either in a straight line or in the shape of an L. You can then add another three gems of either the same colour or another to then add a second chain reaction. But in order for a chain to work, it must be attached to the starting gem that is generally found at the centre of the grid. If it is not linked to the starting gem, the whole chain won't activate. When you're either happy with your chain or you run out of time, the chain reaction will begin and for each explosion made, your multiplier increases by 1. While your score is being added up with more gems involved, the more points you obtain. Once the score and multiplier are totaled, your score for that chain is then multiplied in accordance to your multiplier. Along with obtaining points, the more reactions you make, the more additional time is granted to you, with each multiplier adding an extra 2 seconds to the clock. The board is then reset and you need to repeat the process again. It is an interesting take on the standard match tree formula and certainly one of the trickier to get the hang of, but once you come to grips with how linking the chains work, it is quite an exhilarating experience that puts your thinking power to the test as the clock quickly ticks away. There is utmost satisfaction as you sit back and watch your chain reactions explode like fireworks with various colours flying in all directions. It is quite a spectacle. Along with the goals, each level has a game mode associated with it. The game modes include Arcade, Darkness and Endurance just to name a few. Arcade is the standard mode where you simply need to gain a certain amount of points within the time limit given. Darkness mode lowers the amount of available space on the board with each chain that you make, giving you less room to make more chains. Endurance mode has you attempting to gain a set amount of points using only a certain amount of turns with each chain with the more turns being given for each multiplier you build up. Each of the game modes has a difficulty rating starting at easy and going up to advanced. The higher the difficulty the harder the challenge is along with changing up the rules of the game mode slightly. Having the numerous game modes and difficulties results in the levels always changing and never getting repetitive and the further you progress in the game the more modes become available furthering that variety and really adding to the game overall. If there was one problem I would have with the gameplay, it would be that as many of Vertigo Gaming Inc's games, there are some serious difficulty spikes throughout. Once you get to the fourth constellation, you tend to get one or two levels that are unfair on how difficult they are, resulting in it often feeling you won out of luck with how the gems spawned as opposed to you playing well. A perfect example of this is in the mid levels of the fifth constellation, where you need to get over 300,000 points with a 40 second timer. 40 seconds is not a lot of time to make a big chain, and to even stand a chance in this level you need to make 12 plus reaction chains minimum. It results in you often being at the mercy of how the board generates and what gems spawn as you place them. While such levels are frustrating, there is generally only one or two in a constellation and they don't really begin to become apparent until the halfway mark through the game. They are a roadblock but once you get past them it is often easy sailing until you run into the next one which is generally a while away. Along with the main campaign or journey as it is called in the game, there are two additional separate modes to play, those being puzzle and ranked. 
Puzzle mode contains a series of levels where you have generally only one or two gems at your disposal, where you need to figure out where to place them in order to clear the board using a chain. It is a neat little addition to the game that changes the gameplay to a more relaxed pace where it becomes more about brain power over speed. And with over 50 levels, it adds a hefty amount of additional content to what is already present. Then there is a ranked mode, which is unlocked by obtaining 20 of the 36 medals in the game. Medals essentially being Spirit of Metropolis's version of achievements. The ranked mode allows users to compete for the highest score across the game's many different modes. It doesn't add a whole level of extra content to the game, but is a fun little addition for those interested in board rankings. And then there's also the option where, like Shell Blast, you can also make your own levels for use to challenge either yourself or your friends with if you so wish to do so, which is a nice little touch that adds to the content of the game. Overall, the gameplay to Spirits of Metropolis is unique, engaging and a whole lot of fun, offering a completely new and well-executed take on the match tree genre, with plenty of variety. While it does have the typical Vertigo Gaming Inc. difficulty spikes, they are only on occasion, and with so much content being offered for its price, it is something that is easy to overlook, making the game well worth checking out for any match tree fans. The atmosphere to Spirits of Metropolis is fairly well done, consisting of a small library of tracks that the player can go through as they please while they play. The tracks have a more relaxing feel to them to fit in with the casual and laid back nature of the game, making it one of those games that you play to wind down instead of getting the adrenaline going. They don't really add to the overall experience of the game, but fit in well to further the chill out mood that Spirits of Metropolis sets out to bring. Spirits of Metropolis is easily the best out of the five games that the Vertical Gaming Inc. Legacy Collection has to offer. While the Isle Blue may be my personal favourite of them, Spirits of Metropolis is much better designed and executed overall, given the variety that was otherwise missing in the other games in the bundle. Its unique twist on the Match 3 gameplay is fun, and the many different modes of play keep the game feeling fresh from beginning to end, while the additional game modes add more than enough content for the asking price and given a more relaxed and chilled out feeling to it. Spirits of Metropolis alone is worth the asking price of the bundle in its entirety, so even if you were to buy the bundle just for this, the other games are just extra servings of gravy. And with that, I give Spirits of Metropolis a 9 out of 10. The scores of the 5 games come in with the Isle Blue getting a 7, the Sandbox of God getting a 5, Shell Blast a 7, Green Tech a 7, and finally, Spirits of Metropolis gets a well-deserved 9 bringing the average of them all to a respectable 7, making the Vertigo Gaming Inc. Collection bundle genuinely good overall. It is a bundle that is worth its asking price of €9.10, even if there are only one or two games that take your interest out of five. But it is a collection of games that you will need to go in with an open mind, as each stray away from the comforts of the genres that they inspire from, but in return grant unique experiences. And that is what Vertigo Gaming Inc. has built themselves on, granting unique and different games that you aren't going to find anywhere else. A decision in video game development that is risky and bold in today's market, but one that has paid off for them, and may continue to do so for many years to come.